All right, so the textbook has two series in this example. Um, the second one requires a lot more computational power than we can do on the, on the light board here, right? We need um, computer, there's Newton's method, there's a lot of stuff involved, it's, it gets messy. Uh, this one we can do more or less by hand, right? More or less. So we want, to, we want to calculate this alternating series accurate to 0 0.001, right? So essentially we want to get it to three decimal places. Um, so what we're looking at here, we're looking at 1 minus 1 over 2 cubed, right? Minus 1 over 8. So and we can kind of think about, you know, partial sums, but let's, let's you yeah. know, and then... 1 over 3 cubed minus 1 over 4 cubed, uh, and, and so on, right? So and the partial sums are not so easy to calculate once you get to like, you know, one, that's 1 over 80 or 1 over 27. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, 1 over 8, that's like 0 0.125. So this is like 1 and then, and then like uh, 0.875. And then we add on a bit, we keep going back and forth. And so we want to we wanna calculate the value of this sum. We can put this into the calculator, right? We, we can use a computer, even a basic calculator can probably handle this to, uh, as long as we don't have to go too high, scientific calculator can definitely do it. Um, but we want to know, well, how far do we have to go to be accurate to within, you know, 0 0.001? Well, the summation theorem here says that it's always the next term in the sequence that, that tells us our accuracy. So we say, okay, when, when, when do we get to 0 0.001? So when do we have 1 over n cubed less than or equal to 0 0.001? Um, well, 1 over 10 cubed is going to do it, right? 10 cubed is 1,000. That's exactly zero, zero, 001. Okay? So that means that we can take, well, n plus 1 to be 10 if we want to use the notation that's over there. Um, so that means that n equals 9 will do. Right? So we can, we can calculate S9. Um, I'm not going to do it because I don't have a calculator in my pocket. But S9 will be the sum, um, say n going from 1 to 9, minus 1 to the n over n cubed. And if you work that out, I think you get, maybe we'll write this as an approximation, I think in the textbook they have something like minus, or 0 0.9021 something, I forget the, it's as much as I remember from the, uh, when I looked at this a few minutes ago in the textbook. Uh, you get a number around there. Um, when you put n equals 10, you actually get a negative value, so you're actually going to get like 9011. So the, um, the actual sum then, right, um, the sum is going to be somewhere between 0 0.9011, whatever the other terms were, and 0 0.9021. Uh, Right, so you get you get a an interval there of the appropriate length. It tells you about where the limit is, and so if that's not accurate enough for you, you can always you know add more terms. Right, um, you want to get another decimal place of accuracy. Well, you're just going to have to increase the value of n by a little bit. Um, so this is the sort of thing you could probably set up in like a spreadsheet. Right, you can even just you could just calculate the terms in the sequence. You can watch the value. You just plug them in, right? You put the formula in the spreadsheet for you know each row as a different value of n, and you just you just run that down the spreadsheet until you see the term that's as small as you want it, right? Until you the size is within the the area, the level of accuracy that you want, 0 0.001 or maybe 0 0001, however many decimal places you want to get. Um, run that down a spreadsheet till the value is small enough, and then you just sum. Right? You just add them up. It's easy enough. So it gives you a pretty good method for, for approximating alternating series. But only alternating series. There's nothing quite so simple as this. Um, 
for a series with only positive terms, right? Because then everything is adding up and it's far too complicated if everything is adding up, right? Um, how do you kind of figure out the, the contribution of infinitely many terms that are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and it really depends on how small they're getting and how fast they're getting that small. It's very complicated and, and you know, like sometimes we, we're not even sure if something converges. Whereas here, it's really easy to tell if something converges, right? We just look at the limit of the sequence as long as it's positive and decreasing. And it's also easy to get the approximation, right? So alternating series are somehow easier to work with um, in a lot of cases.